People haven't seen what we've seen, and we don't want them to see it. It's not just someone who was collecting pictures from the internet. These guys are part of a criminal enterprise. Online child exploitation is one of the world's fastest growing crimes. Investigating it is widely considered the toughest job in law enforcement. It's just a wave that hits you every single day that you come in. Six years ago, police working in the field took 7.30 behind the scenes of an arrest that shook the nation. This is a reenactment showing how officers approached what appeared to be an ordinary house in suburban Adelaide. Their target was 32-year-old Shannon McCool, a child protection worker and the leader of a global online pedophile ring with 45,000 members. The arrest was a milestone in a long-running police operation by Task Force Argos, and it didn't stop there. Phase two for me was to take over the network, assume control of the network, and ultimately identify as many criminal offences committed by members of the network as we could. Across several operations, the task force became adept at infiltrating online pedophile networks, masquerading as child sex offenders and sifting through mountains of harrowing material to search for clues that would lead them to victims. Now their efforts are the focus of a documentary, The Children in the Pictures. You feel like you need a shower afterwards. You just, you feel dirty. In collaboration with overseas police agencies, Task Force Argos has rescued thousands of children from their abusers. But it's a relentless job. And the online boards set up to share abusive material have grown exponentially over the past 20 years. Every time we think we've dealt with one, um, a new one pops up and it's more and more people each time. The boards that we continue to monitor now, we're now up in the hundreds of thousands in their membership. For Kelly Humphreys, stories of child exploitation hit close to home. I remember the first time and it was when I was about eight and I recall my uncle uh, was, so my uncle is my offender and um, he came to me and he pulled me close and I remember him saying, I want to teach you what it's like to love, just like in the movies. And that night before I fell asleep, he came into the bedroom and that's where the sexual offending began. And once that started, he continued that offending until I was 15. Kelly disclosed the abuse when she was 19 and her uncle was convicted. Now a senior constable with eight years experience as a school-based police officer, she's seen a shift in the way abusers groom children. With the self-produced material, a young person will um, make contact with somebody online or they will make contact with them uh, and encourage them to create uh, that image. Once that happens, that's the end of the game because they've then got that image and they can then threaten the child to produce more content. And we see this time and time again. As offenders find new avenues, experts have developed innovative methods to track them down. It starts with tech companies who detect abusive material and report it to organisations like the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children in the US. Last year we received more than 21 million reports, mostly from the tech companies regarding child sexual exploitation on their servers. Uh, we actually sent 94% of those reports to other countries outside of the US. Law enforcement agencies then analyse the digital fingerprint on these images or videos against a database to filter out the old material and identify new victims. Anything that's left is potentially unique, has never been seen before, which means that that, that person that they have seized this from may be a hands-on abuser. But moves by social media companies to protect user privacy could derail that process. Facebook has unveiled plans to expand end-to-end -end encryption for its main messaging service,
preventing third parties and police from obtaining conversations that could become evidence in their investigations. Facebook and, it, and its platforms are the most significant contributor to, uh, to the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children with cyber tips from self-reporting. So we may be facing something in the vicinity of about a 70% reduction. It's a difficult balance for the tech companies to strike that balance of privacy and child safety, but we cannot accept that children and child victims are going to be collateral damage. A Facebook spokesperson says the company employs 40,000 people globally to work on safety and security and has spent $13 billion in this area since 2016. They say their teams use behavioural patterns and user reports to combat abuse on encrypted platforms and they remain committed to keeping young people safe. Most never tell, most are too afraid and most worry they won't be believed. As a public speaker and author, Kelly Humphreys has dedicated her life to helping survivors find their voice. We have to bring all of this into, into the light because that's when it loses its power. And with police vastly outnumbered in the fight against online child exploitation, she says parents have a key role to play. The greatest tool you can have against is, is having that connection with your child feeling like that the child can come to you or the teenager or whoever it is and have a safe conversation. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.